And here's what's going to happen with the economy if we go through it. So interest rates right now, 5.7%, which means you would have bought a house eight months ago. Your rates would have been 3%, 2.5%. Right now, it's 5.7%. Here's what people don't realize. If you go back from today, let's just say go all the way back to 1970. Do you know from 2008 prior, from 2008 and prior, like 1970 to 2008, do you know the interest rates have never been at 5.7%? It's always above 5.7%. Mm-hmm. Let me say this one more time. From 08 and prior to 70, rates have always been 6.5%, 7.5%, 8.5%, In 80, 81, under Carter, it was at 18.5%. Okay, but that was pretty bad. Now, let's go worst case scenario. Let's go best case scenario. And you decide where you want to manage your level of risk tolerance. <laughs> So let's let's move on to some of the some of your sort of nuts and bolts stuff because we talked a little bit about economy uh, a couple of weeks ago. You had a video out that I saw where I think you said, but correct me if I'm wrong, that you said that we would officially or they would officially announce a recession. I think you said by July 15th. It seems to me they've already kind of admitted it. Yellen has sort of. You probably saw the video where she said, "Well, we're probably in one, but we're hopeful," and then they all kind of admit it. Well, I, I guess, A, do you think we are, te- I mean, I think technically we are in a recession, but do you think they will admit it? And how do you feel about July 15th, middle of the month? I mean, are we there? I think July 1st was the first day of recession. Uh, I think the numbers on GDP has got to come out July 28th, and we'll find out if it's two quarters of the economy declining. And then it'll become official with some economists will say that. Uh, now, CNN, I don't know if you saw the article last week by CNN saying, you know, some experts are saying uh, uh, we're in recession, but why is it that it's eight white economists that are saying we're in oh, recession? So I saw this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saw this article. Yeah. When it yeah, comes yeah. down to recession, nobody cares what color you are. And they said these economists are not diverse enough. You know, there's no African American economists in America. The African American population is 13 percent, but only three percent are economists. You know, and this percent is this, but that percent is this. And I said, look, you know, in America, um, 24% of the population is Hispanic, but in the NBA, it's only one Hispanic player. What a racist organization the NBA is. Why don't you guys go a little bit more diverse and have hire some Hispanics? There is no Iranian basketball player. I'm offended that you guys don't have any Iranian basketball players in the NBA. So you hear comments like this people are making to get people distracted from the fact that we're in recession. It's what's happening. Now, the question becomes... How ugly can it get? And, you know, how many people will be prepared for it and what policies the current administration will come? My hopes is they don't do one thing. And the one thing I hope they don't do, because it's going to happen when Lehman Brothers, when AIG, when all these companies are going through what they went through in 07, 08, 09, when we remember what happened there, those stories are going to come up when some banks are not going to make it. You're going to hear some stories of some of these companies that are multi, multi billion dollar companies. They're not going to make it and they're going to need to be uh, bailed out. I just hope, Dave, they don't go the bailout model because if they go to bailout model, what the bailout model does is it just delays the headache for 10 more years. It delays the headache for 10 more years. It keeps delaying it versus let's just go through it. And here's what's going to happen with the economy if we go through it. So interest rates right now, 5.7% which means you would have bought a house eight months ago, your rates would have been 3%, 2.5%. Right now it's 5.7%. Here's what people don't realize. If you go back from today, let's just say go all the way back to 1970. Do you know from 2008 prior, from 2008 and prior, like 1970 to 2008, do you know the interest rates have never been at 5.7%? It's always above 5.7%. Mm-hmm. Let me say this one more time. From 08 and prior to 70, rates have always been six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half. In 80, 81, under Carter, it was at 18 and a half percent. Okay, but that was pretty bad. Now, let's go worst case scenario. Let's go best case scenario. And you decide where you want to manage your level of risk tolerance. Worst case scenario, we're going to hit 19 percent in interest rates. What's the likelihood of that happening? Less than 5 percent. Okay. But that's 19%. That's worst case. What's the best case scenario? 
We end up around seven, seven and a half, and we stayed there for a few years. Okay, if we go to seven, seven and a half, maybe we go up and hit 10 points, which we probably will. And then we come back down and level off around seven to 8%, which is fine. If we stay at seven to 8% for a decade, give or take a decade, and we're kind of like, oh, I got a good rate. What rate did you get? 7.1%. Fine. But now we're going back to being fiscally responsible instead of keeping these interest rates at zero and you're getting loans at two and a half percent, which is all fake money. And it's not the real way of doing it. So yes, we're in recession, but I'm almost, I'm almost leaning towards the administration doing nothing. Now, the only thing I would recommend if the administration wanted to do something like this, who, who does the current administration need the most today? Well, um, a story came out talking about the fact that companies now are rescinding offers. How often do you even read an article like that? That means Twitter gave you a job offer for 100 grand with $50,000 in bonuses with 401k, all this stuff. You get started on the 19th and they say to you a week later, after you put in your two week notice, we're rescinding that job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Zuckerberg is wanting to fire people. He's doing the right thing. Tesla's firing people. A bunch of companies are letting people go. And that's going to be taking place. Now, if that happens and a lot of people lose their jobs, economy is going to take a hit. Crime's going to go up. A lot of scary things could happen if the economy that's, that get, get, gets that bad. The one thing Biden and, and their administration could potentially do is, and, and Dave, you tell me what you think about this. What if they said, hey, you got these five employees you could hire this year at 50 grand a pop. Let's just pick the number 50 a pop. Five times 50. If you hire five employees and give them a job, Mr. Employer, Mr. Small Business Owner, which is 49% of America, 49% of all the jobs are small business owners. Um, if you give those five people $50,000 of your jobs, we'll give you a tax credit on half of it, which means what? I'm it means I hire it. five people overnight. That's what I would do. Yep. So now small business owners are like, listen, John, come on, 50K, $25,000 tax credit. Come on. So that way the employer wins, the employee wins, and the administration wins. Those are the types of things that the administration can do. Not the PPP loan, not free money, not a UBI. No, let's kind of work. Put it on me, put it on the employee, put it on the government. Let's work together the next two, three years because it's going to get ugly. So I can hear loudly through the pipes of the internet, all of the people watching this going, Patrick, you just made sense there. But the problem <laughs> is that the Democrats are in charge and that there is basically a controlled demolition of our economy. One of the things that I talk about on the show a lot is I try not to judge people's motives, but it seems almost impossible for me to believe that this is not intentional, that the inflation stuff is not intentional, the printing of money is not intentional. All, the people, everything that they have done has been designed, specific, everything with energy, specifically designed to destroy the economy. So of course what you just said there makes sense. Like anything, literally anything, some tax relief for people, fine, but they won't do any of it because it is by design. Do you, do you buy that theory? Uh, let's, play, let's play that part. Yeah. Let's see yeah. this by design. I hope it is. Great. Do it by design. Do it by, I'm totally okay with you doing it by design. Here's why. Because they think majority of the American people are dummies and they're not. Let's not, let's not expect that everybody's brilliant. No, we're, we're naive if we think that. Let's, let's say 40% of people are not going to pay attention to anything and they're going to fall for that. You're right. It's the rich man's fault. Let's tax the billionaires. It's not going to solve anything, right? But if that's their card, it'll backfire. Why? Let's unpack that. So go with defund the police. What a great marketing campaign. And the Republicans were so worried. Look at these. I can't believe they're saying this. Let them say it. Because their own people are going to turn against them. Mm -hmm. Six months later, what the hell are you talking about defund the police? Democrats are saying it to Democrats. I voted for you. I don't want you to defund the police. Well, we, we never said it. It was really the Republicans. No, no, you said it. You said this. This is not a good idea. Yeah. So watch this. This whole concept where, you know, many people on the left were saying, you, companies, corporations, you should let people work from home. Oh, really? Yes. You should let people work from home. No problem. Who said that? Liberal governors from left-leaning states. Okay. They said that. Sounded like a very good idea. Like you're supporting so many people on your own side. No, no. Here's what you did when you said you should be able to let them work from home. The people said, oh, so you mean to tell me I can work for IBM and work from home? Yes. No problem, New York. I'm moving to Florida and I'll work from home. New York lost $21 billion of tax revenue last year. 
So even though, Dave, they're doing it intentionally, if they are, majority of America is going to fall for the tactic, t- tactics and they're going to say, yeah, I'm kind of not with you. I'm stepping away from you. And they'll flip. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.